Greetings troops and future rocket scientists. You will need to know how to derive equations for kinetic energy, potential energy, and total energy of satellites orbiting around. Those will not be given to you in your IV data booklet. You need to understand how graphs of those orbiting objects will work. And then we'll talk about weightlessness and why astronauts appear to have no force of gravity on them, even though they do. You do have to know these derivations of kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. So let's get down to it. Let's say that you've got a satellite at a distance r from the center of the planet to the orbiting satellite. Now we know that Ke is going to be 1 half mv squared. And let's say you want to find it not in terms of velocity, but just in terms of its distance, what that has to be, uh, what its energy has to be based on its distance from the planet. So let's take a detour down here, and let's say that, based on F equals ma, plug in what you know has to be the case for force and acceleration, since it's in orbit around a planet. Here I skipped ahead a little bit after plugging in Newton's universal law of gravitation, and what I know the acceleration for circular motion is, v squared over r, and I solve for v squared. Now pause it, plug it in up here, and see what you get. Hopefully you got your one half m times g m over r, and then what our final answer is going to be is g m small m over two r kinetic energy for an orbiting satellite at a particular height above the center of the planet. Now to get the GPE from its gravitational potential, actually you should have the GPE equation memorized, but let's say you don't, and you have to derive it. You can look in your data booklet, and you can see that V is equal to E over M, where this E is the gravitational potential energy. So if you rearrange this to V times M equals E, the data booklet also gives you your equation for V as, uh, what is it, negative G M over R. And then you plug that in, and you're going to get negative g m m over r. That is your answer. But boom, it's just that easy. Once you already have kinetic energy and GPE, finding total energy or deriving it is pretty simple. Because you know that total energy is going to be the Ke plus the GPE. Pause it plug in the things and combine them and see what you get. All right, you're going to plug in the Ke. Remember your GPE is a negative. That's important. And hey, hey, I skipped ahead and there is your final answer. Keep in mind the total energy is negative because it's still trapped within orbit around a planet and there you go. Now here's a graph for one particular satellite in which each of these lines is going to represent GPE, kinetic energy, or total energy. Take a minute and pause it and see if you can figure out which label goes in which of these boxes. Hopefully you knew that the top one, the only one that's positive, because this is zero here, had to be the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy cannot be negative. The negative one down here is going to be the GPE because the total energy is going to be this very negative GPE with some positive stuff added onto it. And so that is going to be your TE, or total energy, right here. There are a few different types of weightlessness that we can discuss. One is, let's say you're in very deep space, as this guy right here is, and he is coasting somewhere. Maybe he's coasting to another star. So he's in between our sun and Alpha Centauri, light years from either one. The effects of gravity would be so small, they'd be negligible. So he's floating around along with everything in his spaceship, and he would be weightless. As long as the ship is not accelerating or spinning, which would also be a type of acceleration on him. Another type of weightlessness is just strictly freefall. And that could be when you are riding an elevator up a very tall building, and you are having a really bad day because the elevator cable snaps. And then your elevator and everything in it plunges at an acceleration of 9.81 to 
to the bottom. Now, since everything, your you, the elevator, your drink, things on the floor are accelerating at the same rate, they are now weightless. Things have the ability to start floating around. If you put something up here, it's going to stay there. Down here, things will float because they're all accelerating at the same rate. If you were, maybe you'd enjoy it for a short time before your life ended quite quickly. Now, there would actually be no experiment that you could do between this one on the left in deep space and also in freefall uh, because they would be at is if you were in a closed box, you could not tell the difference. Both of them could potentially be quite frightening. Most of the videos that you've seen of astronauts in a weightless environment is of astronauts on the space shuttle or the International Space Station that are in orbital motion. Now, they definitely and very much have a force of gravity on them. That's because they're only in low Earth orbit. Technically, they'd really only be somewhere around here, around the Earth. But their spaceship is in freefall around the Earth, exactly like the elevator falling down, except it's also falling sideways around the Earth. This is a type of freefall, but it has also a sideways motion, or a constant speed of freefall around the Earth. So it's not too much different from here. They are falling, it's just a very controlled fall that keeps them always at the same distance from the surface of the Earth. The force of gravity is not that much reduced there because they're only right up here. The small g gravitational field strength is probably still over a value of 9, although I don't know exactly what it would be.